Hey guys, this is going to be a SES 900 rover setup tutorial. Um, it's going to be a little bit quicker than the base that we previously did because um, at this point your base should be set up. And we're just going to um, go through the quick options for the rover. Um, somewhat similar, but a little quicker. So we're going to go to your site, Chick fil A again, record a site calibration design, Chick fil A finish screen. It is the latest design, so we will accept that. Now immediately we see the next window is the receiver setup and the mode is rover which is what we want. Now this will automatically default and autofill but there is a couple things that we need to change here. Um, at least one. I see that the network ID is 30 here and we typically run on 10. So if I just hit accept on this it will not find our base because if you remember in the previous video we set up the network ID at 10. So the rover and all machines have to be running on that same network or they will not be talking to our base. So we're gonna need to change that. So the quickest way to change that is we're going to go to, similar to the base, we're gonna go to connection type, go to cable, and we're gonna use COM17, COM12, whatever is here to fail the system. So we failed the system and now it's going to get rid of that autofill and we can go through each um, new box. So now that it failed the system, we're going to go to connection type and we're going to switch that back to Bluetooth. Um, as the previous video I mentioned, we're going to want to scan for devices just to make sure we're getting the correct device. Um, as in the previous video I mentioned, if you just use the memory, it could either try to grab onto an old um, base or old rover that we don't really have present, or that, that system may not even be on and not even talking to us and we'll be like, why is it not connecting? Um, so scanning for devices kind of gets through that. So we're going to scan for devices um, and see if it actually the device is on and if the serial number of the device match. Okay, and so we get some devices that pop up. Um, the SPS 800 series or SPS 855 is always a base and the SPS 900 series is going to be your rover head. And in this case, we want the SPS 900 series for the rover head. And here we have the SPS 986. So we're going to select that. So now it asks for the correction method. So we're going to say radio and receiver. Now it's going to ask for our network and we are going to make it network 10 because that is what we set our base at. Now it's going to say, hey, we found a base on network 10 called Chick-fil-A. And if you remember in the previous video, we set our base to a control point, which is called Chick-fil-A or chick fi um, And that's letting us know that that's the one it's connected to and that's where it's located. And so that lets us know, yep, that's the correct one. So we're going to hit OK on that. And that's going to pop up a question if we want to use quick release. We're going to say no. Some rover heads have a quick release um, attachment that adds to the height of your rover head. We do not have that here at Wyoming Valley Excavating. Um, if we end up having one, you will have to hit yes to that. But for this case, we're going to say no, which will be typical for our rovers. There will be no quick release on our rover head, so we'll say no. Once we select no, it's going to ask for the antenna height. Now, you can type in here two meters. That's typically what we use, and two meters is 6.562 feet. Um, if you do type in, if you forget the 6.562 feet, you can just type in 2M and Trimble will automatically get that calculation for you, the 6.562, but that is our height for the antenna and that's going to be your rod height. So there's usually three notches in our rover rods and you're going to want to go to the very top third notch and typically on the rod there will be a reading that says 2 meters or 2M and that lets you know you're at 2 meters and what that's saying is from the ground or from the very bottom of your rover rod to the very bottom of your rover head is the distance it's measuring. And in this case, that'd be 6.562 feet, or two meters, which is standard for Willamette Valley excavating. And that'll do it. We will now be popped into the map view. Um, it's, it, some rovers will have this GNSS receiver's tilt sensor that you can calibrate. Um, in this case, we're just gonna say yes. So if it asks for that, it just means you haven't set your e-bubble yet to calibrate it to your rod. So what you're going to do is if you say you want to calibrate it, you click yes. And then it's going to say that you need to get your um, rod bubble as, as level as you can. So you're going to level that sucker out. And then when you're ready and your levels can be, you're going to hit start. And for 30 seconds, it's going to calibrate your e-bubble to your rod. So basically what this will do is give you a visual on the screen of what your rod bubble's doing. So it's called the e-bubble. 
and you'll have an e-bubble reading on the screen saying if you're level or not. Once it's calibrated, um, you're just going to hit OK. And then it's going to ask you if you would like to check in on a control point. Now, I would recommend that you always check in on a control point every morning, every time you set up your base and rover. Um, sometimes that's not feasible, sometimes there's not a control point available. Um, but what I'd always say is if you don't check on a control point, always, always check on a survey hub nearby. Um, just for true elevation. You can check true elevation um, by the very top. You can see where it says easting, northing, and elevation. Um, that elevation is what your true sea level is. So always see if you're matching with your um, local site survey because they're kind of going to be the king out there for what we're building. Um, and then for alignment, your, your northing and your easting up there is kind of your longitude and latitude on the earth. So you're going to want to check. It's good to check on a control point, but sometimes you may be off even on the real world. Um, with our model. So what's always good in the day is I always recommend either checking an existing curb or a curb if you have set that you knew was good before or is matching survey, something that you want to check alignment on. Um, so either way, you can check on a true control point that would calibrate the site or you could check on a survey hub and check your elevation and then also check your, uh, your alignment. Um, you'll notice that you will now be getting cuts and fills um, if you're within the model. If you're outside of the model, there won't be any cuts or fills. That just means that you're not in the design map. So once you actually physically walk into where you're building um, with the design model, you will get cuts and fills. Now really quick, before I end the video, I want to show you that once you've set up your river once on the site and you're returning, say the next day, um, the whole process that we went through of you having to fail the system and go through all the options, the autofill is handy when you come to a site and you've been on the same site for say the whole week. So I'll show you really quick how to do that. It's super simple. Um, you're just basically going to select your job, make sure you're on a work order that you want to be, make sure you're on the most current design. And then it's going to, at the receiver setup, it's going to autofill everything. And just double check it, but we can look at this real quick and we know we're on the right network, radio right and receiver. We can see all these things that were just like the previous day. So that's perfect. So all we have to do is hit accept and if everything works out, it will pop up this, do you want to recheck the system? And as we talked about before, yes, if you can, check on a control point or at least check survey hub or existing alignment, existing structures in the area. All right, well, that wraps up this tutorial for SES 900 rover setup. We will also be posting SiteWorks base setup and SiteWorks rover setup, as well as some advanced measuring features for both SES 900 and SiteWorks on this channel.